Astrophotography is a challenging hobby, and one of the things that we often overlook is staying organized. On any clear night, we might capture hundreds of images, and over the span of a year, we might have thousands of photos to deal with. And if you're not staying on top of organizing all these images, it can get very frustrating to deal with. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create an astrophotography archive that'll make it easy to find any image you're looking for. And I'll also give you some tips for staying organized as you continue to capture more data. The first thing we need to do is copy the photos from the ASIR to the computer. And in the past, I would have plugged in a flash drive, went into the app, and then copied them over manually. But that always took like 10 to 20 minutes, which seemed a bit ridiculous. So my new approach is to do this all wirelessly, which actually works a lot better. First, make sure your ASIR is turned on, then go to your computer, look in the Wi-Fi settings, and find your ASIR network and then connect to it. If it asks for a password, it would be 12345678, unless you've changed it. Next, you want to open up a finder window, go up to that top toolbar, and then enter this address. I can never remember if these are actually forward or backslashes, but you can see them right there. And then it's 10.0.0.1. I'll have this written down below if you just want to copy and paste it. But this is the address that will allow us to log into the memory of the ASIR. And it's slash slash 10.0.0.1. Then we'll click on enter. It brings up some network credentials. The username is just going to be guest with no password. That works for me anyway. And this is all assuming that you're on a Windows computer. If you're on Mac, it's probably going to be quite a bit different. With any luck at all, you should now be inside your ASIR's internal memory. And if you're having trouble with this step, first make sure you are connected to the ASIR's Wi-Fi network. Then you go up to the top toolbar of any finder window, type in 10.0.0.1, use guest for the username, there we go. Then we'll go inside the eMMC images and we can see our traditional folder structure. I'll go inside auto run, light, and here we can see all the photos that I've captured in 2025. To be honest, it's not much. It's been a very hard year for Astra out here in Idaho, unfortunately. But at this point, you're free to copy over all your photos to your computer just by copying and pasting. One thing you might want to do though, if you only have a few images, is go into the individual folder and then sort by type. Because the ASIR generates a bunch of these pointless thumbnail JPEGs, which are just going to clog everything up, we don't need them. And so if you can sort by type, you can just grab the fit files and copy those over. On the other hand, if you have a lot of data, in this case I do, I might want to just copy all the folders at once, and then I can always weed out the JPEGs once they're on the computer. That's up to you. And I want to stress that you should be doing this every morning after you've captured data. You don't want to wait around to copy the photos. Because let's say that when you're actually capturing your images, the ASAR put in some weird name for the photos. This happens fairly often. And if you're waiting a week or a month to copy your photos over, and you see some weird name that you've never heard of, you might get confused and not know what you were actually photographing. Also, maybe your composition wasn't quite perfect, or your camera settings were wrong the night before. If there were any problems, you want to figure that out as soon as possible. That way you can fix it for the following clear night. Now that we've copied the photos over to the computer, I want to show you my archive of Astro images going back five years. The first thing to notice is that these are saved on a 4 terabyte backup SSD. I would highly recommend buying at least two backup drives and then copying your archive to both. That way, if you lose one of those hard drives or it gets corrupted, whatever, you should still have another backup. And I chose to do my archive based on the year. Because for me, I know that in 2020 I purchased my first dedicated Astro camera and I really didn't know what I was doing at the time. So I can pretty well guarantee that none of these photos look all that good. For example, if you look at the Pleiades, I mean, it's okay, but I've certainly done better since then. This could also be a fun way to go back and reprocess your data because one of the things I'm still in the process of doing is cleaning up all these old folders. For example, in the past I used to stack with Deep Sky Stacker and that created these annoying little text files next to every light frame. So what I've been doing is sorting by type, selecting all of these now pointless text documents, and then deleting them. Then I grab all of these open FIT files and put them in a new folder called light. 
And because I was not organized in the past, I probably spent an hour yesterday just going through all the old photos and then organizing them. So here's the way I like to have my folders, at least in this instance. I have darks, lights, you might also have a flats folder, whatever. And then inside of there, I also have TIFF and JPEG. The TIFF, these are all my working files, which this is something else we should talk about. When I was stacking with Deep Sky Stacker, I need to have a separate red, green, blue, and in this case, luminance TIFF files. But if I'm gonna be going through this again with Pixinsight, which I probably will, then I don't need these TIFFs. They're useless. They're a waste of time and space, and they're taking up 125 megabytes. So I'm gonna delete them. I'll still keep the master TIFF files around just because that at least gives me some idea of what I did in the past. And then if we look at our JPEGs, not much there either. So that's the way I like to have my folder structure for each target. And of course, I am separating these by the target name. Now there will be some cases like Orion where I'm doing it different ways. I might shoot it in a narrowband. I might shoot it again. In this case, it looks like in November. And so what you can do, like let's say in 2023, I photographed the Cone Nebula two different times. One with the 533 monochrome camera and once with the 2600 color camera. It makes sense to me to sort these by the camera because I know with the 533 that's going to give me a small little square crop and with the 2600 MC, well that's a color camera and it's also going to give me a wider field of view which we can see right there. On the other hand, maybe you still have the same camera after all these years, that's fine and you're using a different telescope. I would make a note of that as well. In 2024, I photographed the iris multiple different times, once with the SpaceCat 61, again with the ASCAR-V with the 600mm configuration, and then because I move around so much, I did another folder when I was in Idaho. That way I know that this was captured from a darker sky. And while we're on the subject of all these folders and subfolders, one of the problems I've seen is that people have really ridiculously long file names and folder names as well. And the problem you might encounter is when you hit about 256 characters roughly for the total file name, Windows will not allow Pixinsight and Photoshop and other programs to actually save a file. You'll just get an error. So one of the worst mistakes you can make is have your photos nested in dozens of subfolders with long names. That's really gonna hurt you in the end. That's why I like to have these nice succinct folder names to keep it simple. And I don't have to worry about hitting that cap of around 256 characters for my file names. If you are computer savvy, there is a way to fix this using the registry. I don't really recommend doing that though unless you understand how computers work. Most of you are better off just reorganizing your folder structure. Another thing to consider when you're building your archive is how many of these photos do you actually still need? I know as photographers we like to hoard all of our images until the end of time, but there will be times where it's smarter to just delete quite a few images. For example, if we go back to 2020, again I really didn't know what I was doing at the time, most of these are probably not the best. And if I go into my Heart Nebula folder, let's take a look at what I have. I have some more TIFFs. Again, I don't need most of this, it's just taking up space. Why do I need a red, H alpha, blue? These are no longer of any use to me. So I'm gonna delete those. And then the light frames, well, look at all this junk we have in here still. So we do have to spend a lot of time just cleaning up some of our older folders and making sure that these redundant, or in some cases useless photos are gone. You might also wanna take a look at your final JPEG that you created. And you might decide, you know what? The amount of noise in this, it's never going to be that good. And I've done much better since then. And if I take a look at the total folder size, almost 9 gigabytes, I might say, maybe it's time to move on and just get rid of this. Or maybe you'll find a folder where you didn't even have a finished image because you only had a few photos. In that case, you'd want to delete those as well, just to free up some space. Another important tip is that if you're photographing the same target night after night, Rather than having multiple folders like Soul Nebula 1, 2, 3, you're better off just combining all those light frames into a single directory. Then you can load up all those light frames in Pick and Sight and stack it together without any problems. And very often I'll stack multiple weeks worth of data all at the same time and it works just fine. This is just one more way of staying organized and cutting down on all those unnecessary folders. Next, I want to talk about organizing with filters because this is going to be one of the most confusing things that you do if you have a color camera or perhaps you have a monochrome camera with a manual filter drawer. The problem that you might have is, let's say you're going through in your ASI error in the auto run 
and it automatically fills in the target name without you correcting it. In this case, SH2240. That doesn't tell me anything. I mean, I know the target, but I don't know if I used a filter or anything else. And the issue is that if I come back to this image a year from now, and I did not organize anything to begin with, then I have no way of knowing what these images were taken with. That's why when you're actually capturing your data in the ASIR, you want to try to include the filter name whenever possible. In my case, I was staying organized though, and I put these in a folder called Lights L Enhance. That way I'll never forget. But it's always best to have the actual filter embedded into the file name whenever possible. That'll be done automatically with a filter wheel, but if you're adding filters manually, then of course you won't get that feature. And I had a similar issue back in the day when I was using the Raza telescope because I could not attach a filter wheel to that. I had to use a little filter drawer with my narrowband filters. And just as a side note, again, I have this labeled Raza Andromeda, Raza Veil. And that lets me know what to expect when I open up this folder, at least based on the telescope. And thankfully, I was on top of this even back in 2021. I had an H-alpha folder and an oxygen folder. And inside of there, if we look closely, it says oxy. So these are taken with oxygen. Then if we look at H-alpha, these say HA. So always try again in your auto run menu, when you're naming your photos, make sure that you try to include the filter name whenever possible. All right, well, before we go, I just want to give you one more clear look at my folder structure to clear up any confusion you might have. Right now, we're looking at my four terabyte backup SSD. If you're still using the older mechanical hard drives, I'd highly recommend upgrading to a solid state drive. It's just gonna make everything much easier and faster. Then inside of my four terabyte backup drive, I created a deep space astro folder, which will differentiate it from a Milky Way directory. And then inside of here, I've got things broken up by a year because that makes sense to me. Inside each year, I've got things broken up by the target. And when I photograph the same target multiple times, I try to show what changed between those two images. In this case for Ryan, it was the camera that changed. But other times, it might be the telescope. In this case, it was the Raza. That was different compared to some of the other targets. When you get inside your target directory, make sure you have a subfolder for each type of image. In my case, there's normally a JPEG folder, lights, TIFF, sometimes darks or flats. I also have my pick stack directory where I can find my master stacked files. And then anywhere in here, you can throw in your pics and site projects, whoever makes sense to you. But you really shouldn't need much more than that. Oh, and I almost forgot a really important tip for pics and site. If you are stacking with that software, it's going to generate multiple folders that you don't really need. You'll find these in your main stacking directory, which I normally call pic stack. Inside of there, very often you'll see registered, debayered, cosmetized, and a few others. The only folder that you need, though, is the master. The others are essentially temporary files and they're going to take up a ton of space. So when you're creating your archive, make sure that you're only copying over the master folder. And even then, you don't actually need all those files inside of there, especially those reference frames. You just need the master lights. All right, well, that's all I've got for you today. I don't know about you, but even with this current configuration, I still have to go through and clean up a lot of these folders. There's a lot of stuff that just got left behind. And this will take you a couple hours to get organized but it's worth spending that time to ensure that you can actually find the photos that you're looking for without wasting hours hunting through a bunch of random folders that don't make any sense. I hope this video has helped you out. And if you still have questions about astrophotography, I do offer private lessons. Those are done via Zoom. We can go through and cover maybe processing or on location, whatever you need help with. But that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in another video.